Hey, what's up everybody? You're watching It's Wildlife. I'm Ryan. And um, we started off with a squirrel hunt today and it quickly turned into a raccoon hunt. Now, if you're watching this, you might think it's kind of weird to eat raccoons. Um, it does seem a little bit weird because it's not a common thing. Now, <clears throat> I have, ever since we bought this property, we've reduced the number of coyotes, we've reduced the number of bobcats, we've seen an increase in the number of deer, but we've seen a decrease in the number of quail. We used to have a lot of quail out here just a few years ago. We'd see them everywhere and the numbers were getting less and less. And so I started doing a little bit of research and I also noticed an uptick in the raccoon population. Now raccoons are really, really hard on quail. They're hard on turkey eggs, any type of ground nesting bird. They're great at finding those nests, digging them up, eating the eggs. Um, and so it makes it very difficult for quail to, to populate with that many raccoons running around. So we've removed 20 raccoons uh, just in the past several months off this property. We probably need to remove about 50 more. But if you're a hunter out there and you've got game cameras, you've noticed an increase in raccoon population. Our hog traps right now, we've got hog traps in different communities and properties that we're catching hogs for that I can't even catch the hogs because the raccoons are coming in and eating the corn. I mean, I've got one, just last night, I had 10 raccoons in the trap at one time. Two medium sized ones and one large one. And they were up there laying in that squirrel nest. They look like a big squirrel nest, but three cones. And right up in there, I saw one of them's head just sticking out. And uh, I don't know how I spotted that, but glad I did. There's three less scavengers on the property. So in my experience, I've got uh, some guys that I've used to give raccoons to all the time, and they've told me if you ever eat one of these, you would never give another one away. And so we're going to try it. Um, this might help you in a survival situation. It might help you with the, with the way grocery prices are going up and the price of everything's going up. It might help you to save some money and think about uh, um, these raccoons as a resource rather than just a liability. I'm going to take one of these smaller raccoons and clean it because uh, a little bit better for barbecue, young is tender. Um, if you guys want to see how I clean this raccoon, I'm going to have a separate video on that. All right, you guys. So Ryan did a great job at cleaning and quartering this raccoon. So our idea was actually inspired by Realtree. They had a delicious looking recipe that is called a maple bourbon glaze grilled raccoon. So we're like, you know what? Let's give it a shot. They, you know, they've never steered us wrong before, so it should be good. So what we're gonna do first is make our honey bourbon glaze, I'm sorry, maple bourbon glaze. So we just need to chop a shallot. So if you haven't, it's funny, the guy at the store was like, what is this thing? I was like, it's a shallot. It's a mix between an onion and a gar garlic. And he's like, oh, I've never seen that before. But anyways, this is a shallot, so you can find it with your garlic and onion in your produce department. We're just gonna finely chop this. But as you can see, it looks like an onion and a garlic. Get all that skin off in a minute. So to make this glaze, we need three tablespoons of butter. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this going here. So we got our butter. So we're gonna let that melt down. While I continue to fine chop this shallot. All right, now that this butter is nice and melted, we're gonna add our finely chopped shallots and let those cook until they're soft. All right, these shallots are looking good and nice and cooked, so we're gonna add our cup of pure maple syrup. I've got a tablespoon of our delicious go-to barbecue seasoning that I would put on everything. So we're gonna put that in there. And then I've got a half a cup of bourbon that we're adding for some extra flavor. All right, we're gonna give that a stir and let this boil and reduce down till it kind of gets thick like a nice glaze that we want for, for our meat. 
Meanwhile, we're going to get our raccoon seasoned as well. So we're going to use our same go-to um, seasoning, our strawberries. And we're just going to get that coated real nice. As you can see, I mean, they look just like chicken, chicken thighs and legs. Like it just looks like a dark meat. Nothing smells fresh and good, nothing off-putting or weird about it, so I'm excited to try it. All right, so our raccoon is seasoned. I've, been, I've got the Traeger preheated to 300 degrees. We're gonna throw it on for an hour and a half or until it reaches 165 degrees internal temperature. It's very important that we cook this all the way through its wild game. We just wanna make sure it's fully cooked. But in the meantime, we're gonna be basting it every 15 minutes with our delicious maple bourbon glaze. All right, so it's been about 45 minutes. So that's about halfway through our cooking time. So we're gonna go ahead and baste one more time, flip them and rebaste. All right, the moment of truth, you guys. They look pretty darn good to me. A nice glazed chicken leg. That's raccoon leg. Excited to try it out. So what do you think? Do you think it's gonna be we're gonna like it or Ooh, it's apart. I don't see how you couldn't like something that looks like that. That's true. I know what we put in the sauce. The sauce is amazing. That looks good. Now a raccoon don't really have parts, but if I had to call it anything, I'd say it would be his knee. I don't know. I'm just gonna grab one and go. That one looks pretty good. Like a chicken Here we go. A frog First leg. time raccoon ever. Here we go. Hmm. It's tender. Way more tender than I thought it would be. took me there so unlike most wild game it's very moist like it's almost uh, you can tell it's got some natural oils to it I'm trying to get I mean that that sauce is tremendous that based if I pull this apart I don't know if you can really tell but There you go. You can see the you can see the fats and the oils and the meat. You might be able to see that, but it's definitely a more moist meat. I'm trying to think of what it compares to. Almost like frog legs. If you ever had frog legs, they're very moist. A lot of a lot of natural oils to it. That's what it reminds me of. Frog legs. That's what they kind of look like too. Yeah. Even frog legs. It's good. Good. So would you eat it again? Yeah, I'd eat it again. If it was cooked like this. Don't look like you got any bite. There. I know, because it was... I couldn't tell when I was biting. If it was tendon or... I mean, it reminds me of barbecue ribs. There's nothing yeah, almost like a porkiness. Like yeah. A pork. Yeah. Fatty pork. But it's yeah. super moist like that. That's the surprising part. But you know when I read reviews, they did say it could be greasy. I was figured because they fried it, but this is, I mean, this is pull apart tender. That's good. All right, guys. So there you have it. We woke up this morning. We're like, let's go on a squirrel hunt. And uh, ended up being a, turned into a raccoon hunt. We did not kill any squirrels. 
but we killed three raccoons, so three less varmints on the property, a little more meat, and I think it's safe to say she's gone completely coon crazy. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, guys. Appreciate y'all. Until next time, stay well. <laughs>